Well, good morning, church. Aren't you glad the Lord is in this house today? Oh, God is so good. God is so good. And his mercy endureth forever and forever and forever and forever. Why don't you turn to somebody, look at them, smile and tell them, I'm so glad you showed up today. Come on, tell them. I'm so glad you showed up today. But I'm so glad above all things that you're here. I'm here. But yes, even more so than that, he is here. Oh, God is good. God is good. Well, how many of this has been a different year? For somebody, it's been a very difficult, dark, desperate year. But I've got two words for you. But God. But God is still upon the throne. Aren't you glad of that? And church, I woke up this morning early. Now, I'm an early riser. Three o'clock comes early every morning. It does. I don't get up at three, but it does come early. <laughs> but as I got up early this morning, the Lord began to stir my heart saying this. He said, tell the people, do not worry and do not fret because it's not over yet. I'll say it again. It's not over yet. Come on, shout amen. It's not over yet. I like to say this part too. It's not over to the fat angel sings. Amen. Oh, yes. But this has been a very different year. Now, back in the month of June, my granddaughter, I've got the best granddaughter in the whole world. But my granddaughter graduated from kindergarten. And I said, Quinn, she said, what, Papa? I said, I want to congratulate you. You just finished kindergarten. She said, thank you, Papa. I said, but you didn't get to go back to school for almost three months because Mommy taught you. She said, I know. I said, but do you know why? Do you know why you didn't get to go back to school? She said, Papa, everybody knows that. I said, why is that? She said, because of school, they were out of toilet paper. Come on now. <laughs> That was so good, I just left it at that. Come on. But I'm glad you're here, but I miss Pastor Sam and Donna. How many of them appreciate our pastors? Shout a big hearty amen, amen, and amen. Oh, God is good. Would you turn, please, this morning to the Gospel of Mark? The Gospel of Mark. Now, Pastor Mark, I got a word for you. You're a great man because the Bible says, Mark, the perfect man. Come on now. <laughs> now, there's take notice of. It says, Mark, the perfect man. Oh, God is good. Would you turn, please, if you have it already, to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to begin this morning with verse number 35. Again, that is Mark chapter four, beginning with verse number 35. Let me say this, you don't wanna miss tonight. Everybody shout tonight. tonight. Now this morning, we're gonna start off nice and easy, quiet, sober, somber, reserved, laid back, low key, and dignified. But tonight, we're gonna cut loose. Tonight, it's gonna be a red hot, Jesus loving, devil chasing, Holy Ghost healing, miracle rally in the presence of our great God. Can somebody shout, I'm believing for that. I mean, God can do all kinds of great things in a miracle service, in a miracle rally. I was in Durham, North Carolina several years ago. We we're having a miracle service. I didn't get to finish preaching before God began to move because as I got up and I read my text, ready to preach, all of a sudden the Lord began to speak to my heart. He said, I want you to have every woman in the place that doctors have told them, that medical science has told them they'll never be able to have children. Have them come to the front right now. I spoke that word and when I did, 17 ladies came to the front. I pray for all 17 ladies knowing with God all things are possible. 
Well, I went back to the same church, Living Waters Christian Center there in Durham. I went back to the same church about five months later for their annual camp meeting series. I was one of the several speakers. And when I went back, guess what? All 17 ladies were pregnant, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about great and mighty things can happen. Now, I was just in South Georgia. Now, I love Georgia. Everybody say Georgia. Georgia, I love Georgia. My mama's from Georgia. You may not know this about me, but I come from a mixed marriage. I do. I do, seriously. My dad is from Alabama. My mama's from Georgia. Come on now. But I was down in South Georgia, down in Jessup, Georgia, just a couple of months ago, and a lady came with me, and, and she said, can I testify? I said, by all means, honey, go ahead and testify. And when... She began to tell me what happened. I got so blessed. She said, you were here in the area at another church about a year ago. And I was sitting out there next to my aunt. And I said, I've got to go up for prayer. I've got to go up and have Brother Dave pray for me. And she said, for what? What reason? She said, because I've been having trouble, trouble, trouble. Everybody shout trouble. She said, I've been having trouble getting pregnant and staying pregnant. I've got pregnant four times and I've had four miscarriages. But I believe my God's gonna touch my body. I'm going up because I've had so much trouble. And so she comes up in the prayer line. I'm praying for this one and this one and this one and this one. I come to her and she said, brother, then let me tell you. I said, zip it. I said, don't say a word. And I said, the Lord told me to tell you, you better get ready because he's going to give you double for your trouble. And when I said that, the power of God hit her. She whoop, she went down and she was laying there. She said, Lord, did he say what I think he said? Does it mean what I think it means? He said, yes. And guess what God gave her? Twins. Come on, shout amen. <laughs> oh, so hallelujah, come some lady said, I've been say the prayer line. Come on now. Are you there yet? Mark chapter four. Are you there? Shout, I'm there. I'm not, so hold on. Mark chapter four, beginning with verse number 35. And the same day when the evening was come, Jesus saith unto his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Now chapter five, verse one. And they came over unto the other side of the sea. I want to minister for just a few moments along these lines. We are going to make it. Come on, say that please. We are going to make it again. We are going to make it. Now make it personal. I am going to make it. One more time. I am going to be. Turn and never tell them, say, you are are going to make it. Come on, tell them. You are going to make it. Father God, we thank you for your word. Your word is life-giving. Your word is life-changing. And Father, I believe today because of your word, we will never, ever be the same again. We thank you now. We bless you. And all of God's people said together, amen. It doesn't matter what it may look like, sound like, feel like, smell like, or taste like. You are going to make it. Why? Because he said so. Now, in this hour that we're living from coast to coast and around the world, people, 
that are losing their faith in God and that are losing their faith in the word of God because fear has got a grip upon them. Fear is seizing them and so many people, they have surrendered their life unto the spirit of fear. But the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But what is fear? Fear is F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. What is fear? Fear is the dark room where negatives are developed. But the Bible tells us over and over and over again to fear not. The Bible tells us to be not afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? But fear comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when fear comes your way and you begin to give in to, you begin to surrender to fear, fear will cause you to forget. But I love the words of the psalmist in Psalms 103 verse two. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Come on, say those two words, forget not and forgetting not all of his benefits. Now, how many know there are many, many benefits we have from the Lord? But fear will cause you to forget about the benefits of the Lord. And I want you to notice today four different benefits. I'm talking about the benefit of his presence. The benefit of his promise the benefit of his power and the benefit of his peace. Again, there is his presence, his promise, his power, and his peace. But notice the story here in Mark's gospel chapter four. The Bible tells us that Jesus said to his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. They got on board that ship in the ninth season and they began to make their way across the sea. But the Bible tells us and all of a sudden, verse 37, there rose a great storm. What kind of storm? A great storm. It doesn't say an itsy bitsy teeny weeny storm. It said a great storm. Has anybody had a, a great storm come your way? Come on, talk to me, somebody. I've had many, many great storms come my way. And all through the Bible, we find men of God and women of God that were going through great storms, but God delivered them. God brought them out. And if God has done it before, guess what? He will do it again. If he's done it for one, guess what? He will do it for another one. And you are the other one. Storms, what do you mean? You can call them by many names. You can call them battles. You can call them conflicts. You can call them struggles. You can call them dilemmas. You can call them attacks. Let's just call them storms. But God has brought people out before it. He will do it again. God brought Daniel out of the lion's den. God brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace. God brought Gilligan from off the island. Come on now. I'm talking about he is still God. And my friend, if God said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. Come on, shout amen. But there rose a great storm. And the Bible says two things were happening. What were the number one? And the wind began to blow. And the waves begin to beat against the ship. There are two things. What are they? Number one, the winds begin to blow. Now, what is that? The winds are the unseen forces. And the waves are the seen forces. How many sometimes the unseen forces can come our way and bring storms? The unseen forces, what do you mean? I'm talking about satanic attacks. Spiritual warfare, I'm talking about things such as the spirit of fear can come upon you, the unseen forces of life. 
but also then the same forces. What do you mean? I'm talking about there are things such as death, divorce, dead. These are the same forces that can come your way. But my friend, it doesn't matter because we are going to make it. Come on, shout amen. But the great storm arose and the disciples, they woke up the master. Where was he? He was asleep in the hinder part, the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. What kind of pillow? It's probably a, a my pillow. I don't know. But he was asleep on a pillow. Why? Was he sleeping? How can he be? Beloved, because when you've got the word of God, you can be at rest. Come on now. But he was asleep on that pillow. And the disciples woke him up. And they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? You better watch what you say. Come on now. I mean, they had the wrong words. They had the wrong confession. Come on now. I know God's people are redeemed from the curse of the law, but most of God's people need to get redeemed from the curse of the jaw. Come on now. I'm talking about speak the right words, but they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The Bible says, and he arose. Everybody shout, he got up. My friends, guess what? When you're going through hell and bad, he's going to get up for you. Come on now, every single time. And the Bible says, and he arose. I love that. And he arose and he rebuked the wind. And it said in the sea, peace be still. And there was what? A great calm. And then Jesus said to those disciples, why are you so fearful? You see, fear calls them to forget about a few things. What did they forget about when fear came? They forgot about what? The presence of God. They forgot about who was on board with them on that ship in the night seas. They forgot about who was there. You say, but who was there? Who was there with them? They forgot about the presence of God. Who was with him? I'm talking about the virgin born son of God was with him. I'm talking about the prophet Messiah was with him. The great I am that I am was with him. El Shaddai was with him. I'm talking about the one that said, let there be light. And the was light was with him. I'm talking about the way maker, the son of God was with them. But they forgot about it. I'm asking you the question, when you're going through storms and trials and difficulties, woes, calamities, adversities, and struggles and stress, have you forgotten about who is with you? Have you forgotten about who is with you? Who is with you? I'm talking about my Lord is with me. My master is with me. Oh, come on now. Who is he? He is my hope, my hope, my healer. Who is he? He is my song, my shield, and my supply. Who is with me? He is my joy. He is my justifier. He is my Jesus, and he's with me. And he said, lo, I'm with you always. He said, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. He is with you. But you see, fear will cause you to forget about him. When fear comes your way, heartaches and troubles and trials and woes and calamities, fear will cause you to take your focus of who's with you and begin to focus upon the storm, the seen and the unseen forces. Fear calls him to forget about the presence of God, but also fear calls him to forget about the promise of God. Now, what was the promise that was given? Jesus said unto them, he said, let us pass over unto the other side. He didn't say, let us get halfway there and go down. He didn't say, let us go under. He didn't say, let us drown. Beloved, guess what? He said to you the same thing. Let us pass over unto the other side. You're not going to sink. You're going to soar. You're not going to fall. You're going to fly. Come on now. You need to remember what thus saith the word of God unto you. Don't forget about the promise of God because all, every one of them, that one word all, the original Greek means all. All the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen. I like to add this part, and I'm not taking no for an answer. Come on now. What has God promised you? 
What has God promised you? Guess what? He'll keep his promise, Philip. He'll keep his promise, Bill. He'll keep his promise, church. Come on. Why is that? Because Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 says, for God is not a man that he shall lie. Woo! Let's try this side. Numbers 23, verse 19, for God is not a man that he shall lie. Now, I love that verse of scripture, hallelujah. It said that God should not lie, come on now. But I like Titus chapter one, verse two a whole lot better. It says that God cannot lie, come on now. And my friend, if God said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. You need to remember what thus saith the Lord unto you. But you don't know what we're going through, honey. That's the key. You need to remember you're going but through it. Come on now. I said you're going through it. Yea, the walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Come on. When thou passest through the waters, they shall not overflow thee. Guess what? You are going to make it. I'll shout it again and again and again. I feel a Pentecostal shout coming on. I say you are going to make it. Woo! I love that phrase in the Bible. It's found several times. It says, and it came to pass. Aren't you glad it doesn't come to stay? Come on now. And it comes to pass. But have you forgotten about the promise of God? Before this Koran, Moran devil started knocking, what did God say to you? God said, I'm gonna raise you up to a higher level. God said, I'm going to save your children and your grandchildren. God said, I'm going to bless you coming in and I'm going to bless you going out. Come on now. God said, I'm going to heal your marriage. Come on now. God said, I'm going to establish you greatly in the ministry. God, well, come on somebody. God says, I'm going to get you out of debt. Somebody should have shouted. Come on now. Oh yeah. I mean, God is giving you a promise. Woo. But then, here comes the storm. Do you think God is sitting up on the throne of heaven saying, well, I know I told him that, but I just can't do it now. There's that Koran Moran devil. Everything is getting kind of weak and low. I better pry the streets of gold. I better put the pearly gates in a pawn shop. I better put the angels on half ration. My Lord, I just can't keep my word. Honey, you can mark it up. If God said he'll do it, if he spoke it, it will come to pass. And what did he say? He said, let us pass over unto the other side. Come on, talk to me, church. How many of you believe you're gonna make it? Come on now. You are going to make it. But fear calls in to forget about what? The presence of God. Fear calls in to forget about what? The promise of God, but also fear calls them to forget about what? The power of God. It was a great storm I'm talking about. It was raging against them profusely. It wasn't a small storm, but it's a great storm. Let me ask you again, has anybody ever gone through a great storm? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Oh, I've gone through some storms. I've gone through the storms. When there were times hell would say, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. I came back from India one time. I picked up a virus in India. I came back, you know, flying from India, you know, 15,000 miles away. Whole way, all the way back, I feel like three miles of bombed out runway. Come on up. I got home. I said, whoo, thank God I'm home. And he'll say, yeah, but you're not going to make it. I was feeling rough and tough. I was feeling kind of bad. Has anybody ever been there before? And as soon as I got home that day, I, you know, from flying around the world, I preached 21 times a week before. Plus that I had jet lag every which way but loose. And I said, sit down. When I sat down, all of a sudden my mind was going, ooh, something's wrong. My mind was spinning around and around and around and around. And my body was going, wow, 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 wow. I turned to my daughter who was visiting. I said, baby, I said, I don't know why, but you better take me to the urgent care. And she said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. I said, but I know it doesn't go by feelings, but I don't feel so good. Come on now. <laughs> and they took me there and my blood pressure was too 82 over 196. 
If you don't know, that's not so good. Come on now. Having flown around halfway around the world, I picked up that virus and I'm talking about, they said, sir, it's a miracle you're still alive flying around the world like that with your blood pressure that high. You should have died. Well, I wasn't ready for that one. Come on now. I don't want to receive that. You should have died. You could have had a heart attack. You could have had a stroke. Woo! But guess what? How many of that was a storm? Come on, shout amen. Oh, yeah. I mean, they kept me in the hospital. They trying to give me all kinds of drugs. And there's some good drugs out there too. But yeah, and it wouldn't come down. It wouldn't come down. I was going through a storm. What was happening? I'm talking the winds were blowing. The waves were beating against me. Woo! But thank God for men of God. Come on now. And my pastor called me. My pastor, he called me. My pastor lives in Midland, Michigan. He called me. He said, Danny, what's going on? I said, oh, not much. Come on now. I was in the hospital that close to dying. He said, what's going on? I said, not much. He said, well, I just had you upon my heart. And I said, well, I said, I do have a blood pressure issue right now. I told him what happened. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Trust me, I was holding on. Come on now. And so he said, let me pray for you. He prayed for me. He says, I tell you this as your pastor. I tell you this as a servant of Almighty God. Your blood pressure is coming down so fast, it's going to astound the doctors and the nurses and the medical profession. And here my church, that was in the morning. And guess what? By that afternoon, it was down to 120 over 60. Come on, shout amen. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Woo. I tell you what, I said, I got to get out of here. I'm not ready for this. They said, you need to stay a while. I said, no, I need to leave a while. Come on now. I said, I got to leave tomorrow for Chicago. Come on now. But guess what? It was a great storm. But guess what? My God said to me, you are passing over. Woo! Why? Because of the power. But they forgot about the power. They forgot about the power. They forgot about it. What Jesus had done in days gone by, they forgot about the power. They forgot about how Jesus turned the water into wine. How Jesus walked upon the water. How Jesus cleansed the leper. How Jesus raised the dead. Have you forgotten about the power of God? Have you forgotten about what God has done for you in days gone by? Have you forgotten about where you were lost and undone in your sin? But Jesus reached down with his hand of mercy and grace and picked you up and washed you clean. How Jesus brought you out of the mire and he put you in the choir. Come on now. Have you forgotten about how he set you free from every habit and shackle and yoke and bond? Oh, come on, somebody. How he turned your life around. Oh, come on. Come on now. Have you forgotten about when your marriage was like a powder keg ready to fall apart, but it brought the pieces back together again? Have you forgotten about the power of God? But also, they forgot about the peace of God. They said, Master, carest thou not the way he perish? And he arose. He rebuked the winds. And he said to the waves, what? Peace be still. I was reading one translation a few days ago. It says, be muzzled, that's enough. I like that. Be muzzled, that's enough. You see, when Jesus is on the scene, guess what? He is going to bring peace. Because who is he? He is what? The Prince of Peace. He'll give you peace, not as the world gives you, but a peace that passes all understanding. That storm is raging. When the winds are blowing, the waves are beating against you, guess what? That peace and calm, peace like a river. He spoke, peace be still. And the Bible says, and that great storm became, what? A great calm. He then said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And those disciples then turned to one another and says, what manner of man is this? I tell you what manner of man is this. He is the son of God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the seed of the woman. He's the Passover lamb. Come on now. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the rock in a weary land. He's the resurrection and the life. He is the bread of life. Come on now. He's the son of righteousness, the rising with healing as we. Who is he? He is our all and all. Come on, shout amen. amen. But then the Bible goes on to say in chapter 5, verse 1, and they what? They passed over unto the other side. 
I close with this, my first closing. And they passed over. Who brought that storm against them? Who was it? Somebody said, God didn't. No, God didn't do it. Because the thief comes, not just to annoy you, but to destroy you. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. I like the words of my dear friend, the late great Pastor John Osteen. Brother John says, God doesn't send the problems, but he doesn't waste them either. Come on now. Because in the midst of it all, he proved himself strong and mighty. But it was the enemy, the wicked one, the devil, Lucifer, the one that's under feet. He's the one that sent that storm. He said, but why did he send the storm? Because he did not want them to what to Pass over to the, the, look at your Bible, church, look at your Bible. But he didn't want them to pass over to the side, but chapter five, verse one says, and they would, and they came over to the other side of the sea. Okay, that was verse one, but what happened in the very next verse? The Bible says, and when he came out, when Jesus came out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. You see the very moment that, they passed over what happened, that man full of devils, that man full of demons. I'm talking about that man was full. He was chock full of demons. That sounded like a candy bar, didn't it? He was chock full of demons. Come on now. I'm talking about he came out, but Jesus what set him free. And what happened immediately after the man was set free, what happened? Jesus healed the woman with the issue of blood. What happened after that? Immediately, he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. And on and on. That's why the devil didn't want them to pass over. Because he knew under the sign, under the sign, what was waiting, he knew under the sign there was deliverance. There was healing. There was miracles. And church, if you only knew what God had for you on the other side, you'd begin to shout, come on out. Because on the other side of your storm, there's greater blessing, there's greater joy, there's greater peace, there's greater anointing. Come on, shout amen. Woo! Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I got a word for you, church. We are going to pass over unto the other side. How many believe that? Come on, shout amen. Would you stand with me, please? Begin to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Come if you would, dear sister. Hallelujah. And begin to play. Hallelujah. In the key of H. Hallelujah. The key of H. That's for hallelujah. That's for Hosanna. That's for Holy Ghost. That's for help me, Lord. Come on. I got a word for you. You're going to make it. But you don't know what I'm going through. But that's the key. You're going through it. He loves you that much. He's with you. He's with you. His presence is with you. I'm so glad he walks with me and he talks with me. I've been through some storms in my life. I've been through some great, great storms. I've been some great, great storms in my life. Many of you know that several years ago, I lost my wife, my best friend, the love of my life, my best friend. I called her my, my hunk of, hunk of burning love. If she was to here, I would have had her for 43 years of my life. Mother, that was a storm for me. She was healthy as could be. She said, baby, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. She goes to bed, has a physical attack, and she's gone. There was a storm. Emotionally, I was going through a storm. Spiritually, I was going through a storm. Can I be honest? I didn't want to live. I didn't want to live. I didn't want to live. But deep down, I said, but God, I got to live. I got to live. I got to live. I got to live. Because I want to see my son graduate from college. I want to see my baby girl walk down the aisle. There's a word that's lost and undone, done, Lord. I know I, I've got a call that's not been completely fulfilled yet, but I was going through a storm. Oh, can I tell you what happened, church? He spoke, peace be still. He spoke, peace be still. Some of you are going through some things that are rough and tough. Let me ask you again, how many of you, has there, you've ever gone through a great storm? Come on, talk to me now. A great storm, a great storm. A number of years ago, 
I was in a revival outside of Chicago in Palos Heights, Illinois at a great church called the Stone Church. That church has started many, many years ago in an 18-month revival by a woman by the name of Maria Wilberth Edder, a great woman of God, a great spiritual mama of days gone by. But I was at the church there, the Stone Church in Palos Heights, and can I be honest with you? We were having a great time. People were getting saved and healed and filled and threw and blessed and touched. But I was going through hell. I was going through hell. Such spiritual warfare coming against me, which way but loose. My mind was so bogged down. My mind was just, I said, I can't take it. I can't take it. What's happening? The winds were blowing. The waves were beating against the ship. I'd preach in each service I minister. Then only go, God would be there to touch and bless and minister to people. But when I came back to the motel room every night, hell was bombarding me. Hell was coming against me. Hell was saying, you're not going to make it. 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 You're going down. You're going under. You're going to sink. You're going to drown. You're not going to make it. And that Tuesday night when I got back, the winds were blowing. The waves were beating. And I said, Lord, I can't take it anymore. I said, Lord, I can't take it. I've been preaching for numerous years now, but I said, I can't take it anymore. I said, tomorrow night, I'll preach last night at this revival, but I'll never preach again. I'll be faithful in the pew, but I'll never stand behind the pulpit after tomorrow night to preach again. I woke up the next morning. I felt worse than the night before. Has anybody been there before? What was happening? The winds were blowing, the waves were beating against me. Hell was saying, you're going down, you're going down, you're not going to make it, you're drowned. You're not going to make it. But I woke up that morning and the precious Holy Spirit said to me, but you're not going to preach. I said, no, I'm not going to preach, but I'll be faithful in the pew. He said, but you're going to continue to live the Christian life. I said, where can I go? My God, you alone have the words of eternal life. He said, then you need to read your Bible. I didn't feel like reading my Bible. Come on, let's be honest. How many sometimes you wake up and you say, whoa, it's time to read the word. I will come on, yeah. But other times she said, I don't feel like it. Come on, let's be honest. And that morning, I didn't feel like it. But it said, read the word. And I just sat there. He said, read Psalms 138. I didn't feel like reading Psalms 138. But I read, there are eight verses in that Psalm. I want you to put up Psalms 138, verse eight. Put that up, please. Psalms 138, verse eight. Psalms 138, verse eight. I read verses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was nothing there. But I got to verse number eight. Verse number eight reads like this. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I preached on that verse about a year before that time. And what that means is this in the original. And the Lord will make perfect all that pertains to your life. And I just looked at that word for a moment and I was still going through hell. But the Lord says, son, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it. And I looked at it again, the Lord will perfect that what's concerned with me. And then I felt prompted to call a pastor friend of mine in Montgomery, Alabama. I called the church, normally the receptions would answer. Then she passed it off to his secretary that owned him. But this day I called the church. It just so happened the receptionist was away from her desk. The phone was ringing. The pastor was walking by her desk. The phone was ringing. So he picked it up. He said, good morning, Christian Life Church. Could I help you, please? I recognized his voice. I said, Brother Steve, he recognized my voice. He said, Danny, hold on just a moment. What was happening, church? The winds were blowing. The waves were beating against me. He said, hold on just a moment. I said, okay. I thought maybe he was another phone call or talking to somebody. I had the phone next to my ear and all of a sudden the man of God just started speaking forth in other tongues, diverse kinds of tongues. He spoke forth probably, I don't know, maybe 10, 11, 12 seconds. And then he started giving the interpretation. This is the interpretation. Yea, my son, did not I speak unto you only moments ago saying, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth thee. Come on, woo! When he said that, I dropped that telephone and I just started dancing around that motel room. Come on now. 
And after two, three minutes of dancing, I realized, hey, I dropped the phone. I wonder if he's still there. I picked it up. I said, hey, Brother Steve, he said, he said I'm here. What about you? He said, are you there? I said, barely, I almost got raptured away, but here I am. He said, what do you need? I said, that's all I need. I'll talk to you later. I got to go. God is my witness. God is my witness. This is before cell phones, and I just, I put the phone down. As I put it down, so I had my hand on the receiver, the phone began to ring. You're talking about perfect timing. How many of God's always on time? I said, God's always on time. He's Jehovah nick of time. He'll show up in the nick of time. Come on now. But as I put it down, the phone started ringing again. I picked it up. It was my little Holy Ghost mama. I said, oh, she says, son. I said, what mama, dear? She said, I don't know what's going on. What's all is happening. But I was up all night long praying for you. And just a moment ago, the Lord told me to call you and to tell you these words. I said, what words, mama? She said, the Lord told me to tell you this. The Lord, can you put it on the screen? They don't need to see me. They need to see the word. Psalm 138, verse eight. Verse eight, verse eight, verse eight. That's verse one. Put it verse eight. Can you do it? Let there be. Come on now. Ooh, I'll, there it is. Verse eight. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Can I say what happened? He spoke peace be still. And that storm came to a grinding halt. Raise your hands up, church. Come on, church. I know some of you are going through rough times right now. I know some of you have been laid off from your jobs. I know some of you lost your businesses. Some of you have been cut back. Hello, your hours and your pay. I know some of you have you know, been in time by this virus that's come against us. I know things have happened. Come on now. I'm talking to all kinds of heartaches and troubles and trials. Oh, come on, church. But I'm here to tell you today as a man of God, you're going to make it. 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 You're going to make it you're gonna make it oh do you believe that come on shout amen you're gonna make it Woo! glory let me ask you one more time but we're gonna pray I know what I'm talking about today I don't know exactly the kind the type of a storm, but I know that there are many, 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 many of you right now and you're going through it. You're going through it. But can I say it again and again and again? We're going to make it. You're going to make it. Why? Because he said so. How many of you today would say, Woo! I have been going through a storm but I need the Lord to get up on my behalf, to rise up like he did for the disciples and speak peace, be still. If you're going through a storm, you've been going through one, let me see your hands. Come on, church, put them up high. Put them up high. Come on, put them up high. Put them up, come on, put them up, 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 come on, put them up high. Woo, come on, high, high, high. Put up both hands, come on, both hands. I want everybody right now with your hands raised, do one more thing. If you believe you're going to make it, hold those hands up high. I want you to get out of your seats and just come around close. Come on right now. Step out of your seats. Everybody that could and would. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody, come on closer. Come on. Come on. Come on. I promise you this. Come on down. You're going to make it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down. 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 Come on closer. You're going to make it. You're going to make it, church. Come on, you're going to make it. I got a word for you. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I said, you're going to make it. You're going to make it, my brother. You're going to make it, my sister. You're going to make it, honey. You're going to make it. You're going to make it, honey. You've been going through a rough season, a rough time. Your emotions have been out of whack. But, honey, you're going to make it. Come on now. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it, my brother. You're going to make it. 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 I've been through some rough times before. Losing my wife, my God. My blood pressure at a high level. Well, I checked the other day and, oh, 
I can't report as 120 over 60. I can't give that report. I got a bad report. I checked it, you know, last, this past Wednesday. It's 128 over 70, my Lord. That's still good. Come on now. <laughs> but you're going to make it. 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 Come on, shout. You're going to make it. 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 Brother, you're going to make it. I feel stirred to tell you this. You're about ready to see a change in the next few weeks. You're about ready to see God arise on your behalf. God said, my son, I'm going to move for you. I'm going to change some things. Get ready. You're going to see the hand of God and people are going to be astounded. They're going to know that God has worked for you. Matter get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm going to believe that. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I can begin to walk amongst you right now. Raise your hands and begin to praise him. Look at me, raise your hands. But look up. As you, look up, look up, look up, look up. Keep, honey, God's going to turn it for you right now. Hallelujah. I hear the word saying there's been a time that you've gone through lately. You've gone through a season in different areas of your life. You've gone through some loss. But God says, oh, get ready because this year is coming to a close. And you've seen some days that were rough and tough. But God says, hold on, my daughter, because next year it's going to be a year of more than enough. Hallelujah. 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 I just hear the Lord saying right now, your blood is being healed. 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 There's a blood, some blood issues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you, uh, your immune system. Honey, raise your hands up high. God is touching you right now. The healing power of God's all over you right now. God is touching your immune system right now. He's touching your blood. You are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Come on, shout amen. Raise your hands up, honey. Now look at me right now. I don't know what's happening, but I hear the word of the Lord saying, and I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. I look at you right now, and I see, as it were, over you a picture. I see like a house. It's been ripped and torn. Come on now. Is that right, honey? Oh, yeah, I'm talking about God says that house, that home was ripped and torn. Your relationship was shattered. But God said, get ready. Is that right, honey? Yeah. But God said, get ready because I will restore. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Now look at me again, honey. Raise your hands up high, that's it. God said, get ready before this year is over. The answer will be there. You're standing at a very pivotal time in your life, saith the Lord. You're standing at the crossroads. You're saying, but God, I need you to talk to me now. I need a word from you. I need an answer. I need an answer. Is that right, honey? I mean, you've been saying this since the first of 2020, but God says, hold on a bit longer because the answer is on the way. Hallelujah. Before this year is over, saith the Lord, you will have that peace in your heart to know what to do. Come on, shout amen. Woo, glory. I feel a Holy Ghost shout. Come on now. Your bones are being healed. Your bones are being healed. Your bones are being healed. Brother, Raise your hands about your bone, your skeletal structure has been healed right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Lord part of your back, I just feel the heat. Is that right, brother? Yeah. That right, God said the Lord part of your back. Hallelujah, the base. Oh, yeah. You're being healed right now. Mendo Sopoco Berlina Mamma. You're being healed. Hallelujah. And also down the legs and the ankles and the feet right now. You're being healed. And the neck. Is that right, brother? Be healed then. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. You're going through a storm. How many of Jesus intervened for them, those disciples? I know there are all kinds of storms. But some of you are going through a great storm. A great storm. Look at me. I said a great storm. A great storm. A great storm. But guess what? 
there's nothing too hard for God. A friend of mine called me back in March when this Koran, Morat devil started knocking. He said, Danny, I'm going through hell. I'm back. I said, you're going to make it. Somebody said, what do you do when you're going through hell? What do you do when you're going through hell? Just don't stop. Because hell was knocking. He, he wasn't just going through a storm, but a great storm. He's got a daughter and twin boys. His daughter came home and said, Mama, Daddy, Mama, Daddy. I know you're talking to me better, but I've been sleeping around. I've been sleeping around, and I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant out of wedlock. I don't know what to do. She thought her life was over. When son comes home and says, I just found out. I've been tested. I've been also sleeping around like this. And I've got AIDS. Tested for AIDS. And mom and dad said, what else can we take? The other son comes home and says, mom and daddy, I found that I don't like boys. I like girls. And then the wife comes in and says to him, Stuart, I don't love you anymore. I'm leaving you. So she walks out on him. A daughter pregnant out of wedlock, like a son with AIDS, a son that, you know, said I'm homosexual. His wife leaves. How many know that was a storm? It was a great storm. You think you're going through something rough and tough. He said, what do we do? I told him, I said, brother, don't worry. I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't know how, but I say this to you as a man of God, that God is going to turn it. Brother, get ready. You're going to see a turnaround. He's the God of the great turnaround. I promise you this. If Jesus says it, a lie, then I'm not telling the truth. But brother, you're going to see a turnaround, some things you've been up against some things you've been facing. But I said to him, I said, don't worry. He said, but all four of them, I said, don't worry. I say this to you as a man of God, like I'm saying to you today at Victor Tabernacle. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to pass over. I got a call from him about three weeks ago. Oh, we got a text right there. He said, can you talk? And I didn't wait to text him back. I just called him right back. He said, can I tell you what happened? I said, yes. He said, I know this isn't the best in many situations, but it's the best for her. She had a miscarriage. The baby's in heaven now. She can finish high school and go on with her life. And I thank God for her. And I don't, if a, if a couple married, man and woman has born of it, the baby, I never pray for that. But for her, that it was right. The son came home, says, I've gone back again, but daddy, I don't know what happened, but they tested me again. They can't find one trace of AIDS in my body. The son, other son came home and says, I don't know what I was thinking. I like girls. <laughs> and his wife says, I know what I was thinking, honey, I love you. Let's start all over again. Come on now. What are you facing? What are you dealing with? What are you up against? Would you raise your hands? Come on, church. And right now, out of the depths of your heart, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to make it. 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 I'm going to make it all. Come on, begin to boldly shout it out loud. Begin to boldly confess it out loud. I am going to make it. Hallelujah. I am going to make it. Woo. Glory. How many of you believe that? Shout a big amen. There may be storms, but he said, let us pass over to the other side. How many just give me two more minutes? Come on, two more. I was sharing Brother Bill Lewis this morning very briefly. Three weeks after I was with you last year, I had a good time last year. 
three weeks after I was with you. And I believe in the healing power of God. God has healed me supernaturally like that blood pressure deal. When I had my eye damaged severely, two pieces of plastic went into my left eye. They said I'd never see again, but God healed me supernaturally. Other things have happened. Thank God for the divine healing without the aid of doctors and medical, but also thank God for doctors, amen. Three weeks after I was with you, I couldn't go to sleep. I finally got to sleep about one o'clock in the morning. Had to get up early the next morning to fly to Dallas. Got to sleep about one. I woke up about three. When I woke up about three, it felt like I had an elephant sitting on my chest. And my left arm was pounding. Oh God, I know what it is, I know what it is. And my son, he lives with me. His bedroom is probably from here to the wall there in front of my bedroom. And I picked up my cell phone and I, and I called him at three o'clock in the morning. And he woke up and said, hello. I said, buddy, he said, hey, daddy. I said, buddy, I need to, need to come here. He said, where are you? I said, I'm in my room. He said, will you come here? I said, I can't come here. He comes on there. He said, what's wrong? He said, it's my heart call. Call 911. Thank God for paramedics. And so he called 911. They came. They came to take me away. Ha ha. Remember that song? So they took me away to the hospital. Again, my blood pressure was through the roof. My blood pressure was through the roof. Here it is. And when I got there, they're going to check me out. A couple of hours later, they said, sir, you've had a massive heart attack. They said, it's a biggie. Well, I didn't like that. Well, about half an hour later, I get a phone call from, from a friend of mine, named David Weeder. And David is a, Brother Kenneth Copeland's, you know, assistant, his bodyguard's right hand man, his armor bearer. We've been friends for years. David called me and said, Hey, bro, what's going on? I said, Oh, not much. He said, Well, I've just been praying for you. It kind of came before my heart. Anything going on? I said, Well, I did have a heart attack a few hours ago. He said, Do what? He said, Well, in about three or four hours, I meet with Brother Copeland and about 100 ministers from around the world. I'm going to have everyone I'm lay hands upon a prayer cloth. This one here. Well, they did that Saturday morning, pray for it. I got it overnight to me. I got it set Sunday morning. I pinned that thing on me. And I, when I did church, I kid you not, I felt, oh God. I felt the anointing of God. But hell said, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. How many of that was still a liar? Come on now. Well, they got me stabilized on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They did a catheterization to find out exactly what all happened. They came back and they said, furthermore, on top of the massive heart attack, and I wasn't feeling good. They said, uh, you got two major blockages in the lower part of your heart. They said, and the heart goes down, the, the tip's called the apex area. They said, you got two major blockages and they're in a bad location. I thought any blockage was a bad, was bad. Yeah, but there's no room to do any kind of a bypass surgery there because the location. He said, furthermore, you get trouble about past surgery 13 years ago. We used up all the available grafts and veins. I got scars here and here and here. I got staples and screws and cables and binding parts of my body all over it. Every time I go through an airport, beep, 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 beep. says, and that we can't do bypass surgery. There's no more veins and grass left. Plus, it's, it's a location where we can't do bypasses. I said, okay, what's behind door number three? <laughs> they said, well, the only thing we can do, and we don't, think, we don't know if we can really do it or not. I said, what's that? Because most people, when they have bypass surgery, the bypasses are straight or kind of cur with a slight curve. He said, but over the past 13 years, years of all of a sudden, they're all crooked and wavy and curvy. And, but we can try to go through the previous bypasses, but if we do, it's, it's so risky and challenging and dangerous. We may nick you. Then we have to open you back up quickly. You may have a heart attack or a stroke. You may die. They said, but we can try. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't like, you know, uh, that we can try. They said, what do you think? I said, I'll get back to you. <laughs> 
Well, my daughter's sitting there and she Googled who was the best cardio surgeon on the East Coast. And the name popped up, Dr. Michael Ragosta. For the past nine years, he had been voted one of the top 10 cardio surgeons in America, specializing in risky heart procedures. I said, I want him. And he was at the UVA Medical Center in Charlottesville. And so I told the doctors there, you know, in Roanoke, I said, I'm gonna go to Charlottesville for a second opinion. They called up there to the UVA Medical Center. And they said, I'm sorry, we have no units available. We have no beds available. We won't be able to take him for at least two or three weeks. And then it was says, you're going down, you're going under. You're gonna drown, you're gonna die, you're not gonna make it. But when they told me that there's no room, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Honey, he says, son, that's what they say. But you just watch me. I'm going to show up and show out for you. In less than an hour, they call back. They said, listen, we've got a, a bed available. If you, if you can bring them up here, we'll take them. You said, well, I thought it was full. It was. But some of you remembered this time last year, December, snowed. And it was snowing everywhere. Everybody they called couldn't get there because of the snow. But there's one stretch of road that was open from Roanoke, Virginia to Charlottesville. Interstate 81 was open. And they got up there. Ooh. And there's many, many, many surgeons up there, cardio surgeons. I don't know who's gonna get the next morning. This man walks in and says, Good morning, I'm Dr. Michael Ragosta. God said, Didn't I tell you you're gonna make it? He said, we're, we'll get to you sometime today, sometime tonight. I got a big load today, but don't worry, young man. I'm 20 years old, he is. He said, I get you fixed up, it'll be all right. And I felt such a peace. What did I have? I had the presence of God with me. I had the presence of God, I had the promise of God, you're gonna make it. What else? I had the power of God and I had that peace. I had that peace. Had that peace. And I was so much set, you know, a set of heavily knocked out. The cane in my room to take me away. And I was I was laying back going, Shandela ka shandela de de deki. And the nurse that came in to give me, she looked at my daughter and says, Is your father bilingual? Yes, he is. He speaks different languages. But I went back and they did the procedures on me and found the nurses. We got you finished, it's all done. You're finished up. I said, can I speak to Dr. Ragosta? I don't want to ask for him, but I did. I'm sorry, sir, he's already gone. Could you ask him to come back? He came back and said, what is it, young man? I was feeling good every time he said that. I said, I him, thank you, doctor, for your expertise. Thank you. He said, you're more than welcome. He said, but young man, there's something I can't figure out. There's something that's got me stumped. There's something that's got me bamfoozled. I don't understand what's going on. I said, what's that? He said, I saw the video footage twice. And those previous bypass were, were waving crooked and like that. He said, but when I went in, they're all straight as an arrow. Come on, show it, amen. I can't explain it. I said, I can't. He said, what is it? I said, my God did it. He said, Evidently, the man upstairs, he must like you. I said, he does. I'm one of his favorites. Come on now. He said, you'll be here for another three, four, five days resting. But guess what? The devil's a liar. I went home the next day. Come on, shout amen. And after two weeks, went back to the cardiologist there where I live in Salem. He ran more tests on me, checked me out. He said, Danny, I said, what doc? He said, um, your heart. He said, I can't see where any damage was ever done to your heart. He says, your heart's as strong as a 16 year old. But can I be honest with you? I said, yeah, we've been friends 17 years, talking to me now. He said, can I really talk to you as a friend? I said, yeah, what is it? He said, Danny, you're fat. <laughs> you need to lose some weight. I said, I want a second opinion. He said, okay, you're ugly too. <laughs> Look at me. I lost about 20 pounds so far. Woo! I used to be a full gospel preacher. Now I'm a lean, mean preacher machine. <laughs> but what happened? How many know there was, a, there was a storm, a great storm? There was a great storm. But guess what? I passed over. 
Raise your hands up high and say, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. You that are here today, around the front union seats, let me say it one more time, loud and clear, you're going to make it. I'm going to believe that. Would you bow your head and close your eyes for just a moment? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to share that to the congregation about how I had that massive heart attack, but somebody needed that. What did I preach on the first message back on the road after that? I preached on healing. And we saw the healing power of God in great manifestation. We've been seeing it stronger ever since. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looked around, nobody moving, nobody stirring. Let me ask you this question. Where do you stand with God? Where do you stand with God? If your life was over today, if today you breathe your last breath on earth, is it well with your soul? Do you know, do you know, do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're ready to meet God? If you die right now, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Where do you stand with God? So right now with heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody looking around, I want to pray for you. I would not do anything to embarrass anybody. I promise you, I would not. But I want to pray for you. So right now, if you're here in this great sanctuary and you've never been born again, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you've never said, Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be saved and I want to be heaven bound. If you're not where you should be with God, if you're not where you should be with God, or maybe you've grown cold, you need to make a comeback, you want me as a man of God to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand up high, put it back down, do it now. Put it up high, put it back down. Put it up high. God bless you. God, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Are the others? Are the others? Come on, put it up high, put it back down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You raise your hand, sweetheart. Yeah, God bless you. Beautiful ladies here. A number of people. Are the others? Are the others? Everybody pray this after me right now. Say, Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. Without you, I'm nothing. But you are my all in all. And I'm asking you right now to get a hold of my life and don't let go. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for me, that I could have life abundantly. You rose from the dead for me. You're alive forevermore. I believe that with all my heart. And I'm asking you right now to come into my life, take over my life, all of my life, from this time forth and forevermore. And with your help, I will live for you. I will serve you. I'm yours. Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. And you that raise your hands and pray that prayer, he heard you. You're heaven bound. He loves you so much. What do you do now? Read your Bible every day. It's a good book. It's a good book. I promise it is. What else? Number two, spend time in prayer every day. You say, but I don't know how to pray. I don't know. I don't have the terminology, the the verbiage to pray. You talk to God like you talk to your best friend. Just leave out all the cuss words. Come on now. And what else? Every time the church doors are open, you be here. Can somebody shout, Amen? You're gonna make it. You may be seated for just a moment, please. You may be seated for just a moment. We're gonna be dismissed in one brief moment. God bless your heads. Just tell somebody that you're being seated. Say, we're going to make it. 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 Tell somebody else. Say, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Now look at me, church. How many of you need... God to move for you in some area of your life, big time. Let me see your hands. Come on, put them up high. You need God to move for you. Oh. I was in a church a number of years ago on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, four services. It was on that Saturday night. 
the pastor said to me, he said, Brother Danny, during the service, keep on playing. I love that, honey. Keep on playing. He said, during the service, I've got to leave the sanctuary to go to my office to make an international phone call. I may be gone for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe more. I don't know. He said, but if I'm not back at the close of the service, just go ahead and receive the offer and encourage everybody to be back tomorrow morning. So it was the close of the service and so he wasn't back yet. And I said, Lord, what, what should I tell the people? He said, ask them this question. The same question I asked them, I'm gonna ask you. How many of you believe that when you obey God, God will bless you? Let me see your hands. Come on now. How many believe when you obey God, God will bless you, God will bless you. But how many believe that if you don't obey God, the same blessing won't be there. Come on now. When I asked the question, every hand went up. I said, the Lord told me to tell you this. And I'm saying the same thing I told them that night. I said, right now, it's offering time. Folks, in a moment, you'll be given an opportunity to give to my ministry. Help me go around the world. But I told them, I said, if you'll give tonight, if you'll obey God, if you'll obey God, if you'll obey God, and do exactly what God tells you to do. Obey God. There's going to be an immediate, everybody shout immediate, abundant harvest. I said, plus God will do something for you that money cannot buy. I said, so folks, obey God. There was a man sitting in the front row that night. His name was Cliff. And Cliff had not been to church in over a month because his wife Terry was in the hospital with stage four cancer, not expected to live. Every day he'd get off work, he'd go there. He, had a, he slept there in the hospital, a little bit beside hers. When he'd get off work, he'd go back again. And here was a Saturday. And a couple of ladies from the church came by the hospital to pray for her. And they said, Brother Cliff, you need to go to church tonight. We got special meetings. He said, no, I need to be here with my wife. They said, Cliff, you haven't been in church in over a month. You need to go just get in the presence of the Lord. He said, I need to stay here with my wife. They said, Cliff, if you go to church, we'll stay here the whole time. We won't go to church, we'll stay here. And we'll pray for Terry the whole time. If something should arise, we'll call you. Because after all, the church is only about five minutes away from the hospital here. So he came that night to the church service. He was sitting there. I said, obey God in your giving and see what God would do for you. I believe that's going to be an immediate abundant harvest. Plus, I believe God would do something for you supernaturally that money cannot buy. Does anybody need that kind of a blessing, something that money cannot buy? I said, God bless you supernaturally. Immediate abundant harvest. Plus, I'm on top of that. And Cliff was sitting there and the Lord says, give. He said, Lord, I can't, I've got nothing to give, I'm broke. He said, give. He said, Lord, I'm broker than broke. He said, give. He said, Lord, I just got paid yesterday. I don't get paid for two weeks now and I'm broke. My car's almost on empty. But I've got no food at home for me or the kids. I got medical bills going through the roof. God, I can't do it. Lord, I can't give because Lord, I have no money, I'm broke. He said, give. He said, Lord, if I had the money, I give it, I don't. He said, you got the money. He said, well, where's the money? He said, in the card. Somebody came that day and gave him a get well card. He put the card in his pocket, forgot about it. But God said, in the card. He forgot it. He reached his pocket, pulled out that card, opened up, and there was 10 $100 bills in there. There was a thousand on his case. Somebody blessed him with. The Lord says, give it. I want you to give that in the offer. He said, Lord, I need this. I need this. He says, son, you didn't have that three hours ago. Give it. He says, son, you know, I'm, I'll bless you if you'll pay. Lord, I give $100. I'll give to my Lord, I got needs. He said, give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. Well, the ushers passed the containers. It went by him. He didn't give it. After it went by, he said, Lord, I love to give him, but I can't. He said, he heard the Lord speak to him so strongly and said, my son, I would love to bless you like my servant said, but you didn't obey me. He said, Lord, is it too late? He said, no, it's not. 
I saw him. I don't know what, what he was giving, but he jumped up. He ran the usher down. He put something in the container, came set back down. By the time he got back to a seat, the pastor came walking in. Pastor walks up to the pulpit and said, folks, I know we've had a great time last night again tonight. He said, but you know, Brother Cliff is with us. As you know, Terry needs a, a physical miracle. He needs a healing. She needs a miracle. But you know, more than that, and also on top of that, their family needs a financial miracle because during this, they had all kinds of financial needs. And the usher's already gone, but before the, you leave tonight, if God speaks to you to bless Cliff and his family, I want you to come up and just put some money in his hands or check in his pocket. God is my witness. Before Cliff left the front row, people came up and over $17,000 was given him. Hold on, don't shout yet. And a very wealthy lady, a very blessed lady that owns about 50 houses, all debt free, in the city of Charleston, came up to her. Tim says, Brother Cliff, yes, dear, what is it? I know during this time of sickness for Terry, you had money set aside for a down payment for a home, but you've had to use it for medical expenses. That's right, that's right. Well, God told me to bless you, and I'm giving you your home, your family. I'm giving you a home. Come on now. I mean, debt free, gave it to him. You're talking about a man getting so happy. You're talking about a man that's bubbling over and said, I can't wait till I get back to the hospital to tell Terry what God did. But when he got back, he had something better waiting for him, more than the $17,000, more than a home that was given him. Because when he got back, Terry was sitting up in bed, completely healed of cancer. Come on, shout amen. While it was going somewhere, the hand of God just wiped it away. Hallelujah. And I feel led of the Lord to say this today. If you will do what God tells you to do in your offering, I believe God's going to bless you. How will God bless you? I don't know. I don't know. He is God. Amen. How many believe he'll bless those that obey? Hedge your bow and eyes to close just for a moment and allow the Lord to speak to your heart. Allow the Lord to speak to your heart. Say, Lord, what should I give? Maybe the Lord would say, well, give this and this. He said, but I never give that amount before. It's a large amount. Beloved, if you give bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. But I believe this with all my heart. If you'll obey the Lord, you're giving. I believe this. I know this. I know this. I know this. He'll give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Amen. Everybody look up, look up. How many of you want the blessing of God in your life? Shout amen. Husbands and wives, turn to one another and say, sweetheart, honey, love, dearest boss, whatever you call them, come on now, and say, what should we give in the offering? Come on, turn to your husband, turn to your wife. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. Who's coming for the mark? Who's coming? Hallelujah. Hey, woo, come on, brother. Take it away. One more word. You are going to pass over. Come on, shout amen. Woo, God is good. God is good. Let us pray for this offering that we're taking up now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this man of God that you have sent today, Lord God. We thank you for the anointing that you have placed on his life. We also thank you, Lord, that we are able to take up an offering today. We also thank you that we can participate in the work that Brother Johnson is doing by giving in this offering today. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and glory. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the work that's being done. And again, we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. as we're completing the collection of the offering, let's be prepared for the benediction. I also like to remind you of the, uh, the prayer meeting tomorrow night in the, in the chapel. Uh, we look forward to seeing everybody tonight at tonight's service. Don't forget that this is going to be, and he promised, a real powerful, just anointed service that's going to just set us on fire. So make sure that you're there tonight. And let's go ahead and say our benediction. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. 
And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you and have a great day. And we'll see you tonight.